In this video we will implement a weather app in React, where you can see on the real example how you can create a React project and communicate with Real API. And in order to get a weather inside our application, we must use some API, which will provide us data for the specific city, which actually means we are typing a city, and then we must fetch the data about the city from the API. And in order to do that, we will use a service which is called openweathermap.org. As you can see pricing here, it has paid plan, but there is also a free tier, which is enough for us to implement a project. It allows us to make 1000 API requests per day. Now let's look on the initial project that I created. And here is an empty project of React, which is created with Vid. And inside my app.js, I rendered just a weather component. So here is a weather folder, and we have three different things inside. First of all, a weather GS6 is completely empty, we didn't even create this component yet, and weather CSS contains all styling which we need for our project. We will fully be focused only on React, so you can take styling in the description box below. And additionally to that, I have here a data.js file. The main idea is that while development, it doesn't make any sense to call an API every single second while we are testing. Here is the example of the API, this is the response for Hamburg, Germany, and we can use this data while we are developing application. Obviously at the end we must build fashion from the real API, but in order to render all blocks correctly, it makes a lot of sense to use this mocked response, because it is exactly the same like the response from the API. With that being said, let's create our weather component. So what we want to do here, we need a component weather, and we don't have any parameters here. And we want to export our component weather. What we want to render inside is a div, which will be our weather block, with all correct styling. This is why here class name weather block. And inside first we must create a form, where we will have an input to submit our location. Essentially, we could write all this code here, but I really want to separate our logic, and I want to create an additional component for this. So let's name this component location search, and inside we want to return a form. And inside this form we will have our input with type text, placeholder city, country. We can't really enter just a city, because we can have the same city in different countries. And the class name here must be location search input. And additionally to that, on our form we need a class name which will be location search. So our form is there, now inside our weather block we can render location search component. Also we didn't bind any styling yet, yes we have it inside weather CSS, but we must import it here. So let's import our file weather.css here on the top and reload the page. As you can see, this is our initial block of weather with our input. Now the idea is we are typing something here, we are hitting enter, and we are getting this information. How can we do that? First of all, inside our input we must store our value, which actually means we need to store here, for example, a location and set location, and it will be our use state hook, which essentially means here we are using use state hook, with initial value empty string, and we can use it for our input. So here we can write that we have a value, and it is our location, and we also have an on change. And our on change event will be to update this location. So here we have access to our event, and we can call set location, where we are providing event target value. This code is completely fine to store the value of our input, but we never submitted our form which actually means here we need a function like handle submit, and we are getting here our event. And now we can use this handle submit on our form, so let's add on submit, which will call our handle submit, and inside first of all we want to prevent the default behavior, with event default. If we don't do that, then our form will be submitted with plain HTML, and the page will be reloaded. What we want to do after our form submission, we need to notify our weather component that we submitted the form, which actually means here we must provide a value, for example location change, and it must update our location. This is why here let's create a state for our location, and set location, 
And here we will use use state hook, which will be an empty string. Now here we are providing location change, which is just a function, and we are calling here set location. And essentially from our location search, we must get our location, which is a string, and we update our location on the outside. So this is how our location search component notifies our state, and we are updating our state. But we didn't implement this logic inside our location search. So here we need to get as a prop our location change function. And now inside our handle submit, we can call location change and provide inside our value, which will be a location. And just to remind you, this location is just a value of the input that we want to provide outside. And after this, it makes a lot of sense to reset our location because we want to see an empty input. What I want to do now, I want to write a console log for our location so we can check if it's working. Let's reload the page and write here Hamburg, Germany. I'm hitting here enter and as you can see inside console we got Hamburg, Germany. Which actually means we successfully created our form where we're notifying our weather parent regarding change of the location. What we need to do now is use this data.js, which is just an object, in order to render with this mock data our weather information. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing. It helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. This is why here what I want to do on the top, I want to import our weather info from data. And this weather info is just an object. Now what I want to do here is create one more component and let's name it weather info. And we want to provide inside our weather info. Yes, obviously for now we are passing this weather info inside and it is not really needed because our weather info on the top is imported as mock data and it is available everywhere, but it will be different later when we will get this data from the API. But for now it is enough to just render all fields inside our weather info block. So here let's create weather info component. And we know that we are getting inside our weather info property. Now here we want to return our markup. So div with class name weather info with dash. And then inside we need to render our image. And essentially here inside our data.js we have inside weather property this information. It's an ID. Inside main we have text like it is clouds. And this is an icon. And I have here an icon 0 for n. And actually I downloaded all icons from this website, which API we will use, and they are all available inside public folder. As you can see here, they are starting like 01D, 01 night, and so on. And again, you can download all these assets in the description box below. Now let's jump back inside our weather info and render here an image. So we can write here an image tag with class name, weather info image. And here will be our source. And actually our source must be a string because we have here a URL slash public because this is our public asset. And then here will be our variable. So from our weather info, we can read weather zero because it was the array with a single object, then dot icon. But this is just an icon without an extension. We must write here after dot png and close this image tag. As you can see in browser, we got a nice image inside our application, obviously from mock data. Now after this, we must render a temperature, but here is a problem. Inside our data, we have a temperature inside main, but all this temperature is not in Celsius. We must convert it to Celsius. This is why here, let's jump back. And here inside our weather info component, I want to calculate our Celsius temperature. And in order to do that, we can use math floor. And if you don't remember, it rounds the number to the lower number. And we can use here weather info dot main dot temp minus 273. So this line will calculate for us at Celsius temperature. And now we can render it inside one more div weather info temp. And let's render here our Celsius temperature space. And here should be a Celsius symbol. As you can see in browser, our temperature is rendered and now it is in Celsius. After this, we have a name of the city. So let's add here one more class name, weather info name. And inside we can render weather info dot name. 
As you can see here, we got Hamburg. And the last part will be a detailed information about our weather. This is why here, div class name, weather info details. And inside we have three blocks with div class name, weather info detail. And first one here will be a bold line, feels like. And after it, we must render a temperature of feels like. But again, we must convert it. This is why I want to copy paste our Celsius temperature and name it here Celsius feels like temperature where we're taking not main temp, but main dot feels like with underscore. And now here inside our feels like we can render this Celsius feels like temperature. Let's have a look. As you can see here, we're getting feels like seven, which actually means we must put here Celsius symbol also to make it pretty. Now we can copy paste this block two more times because we want to render here humidity. And here we want to render weather info dot main dot humidity. And here instead of Celsius, we can write percent sign. And the last one here will be wind speed. And we can read it from our weather info.wind.speed. And it is kilometers per hour. Let's have a look. All our fields are being rendered. And this is exactly how our end application must look like. But now here is the most important part. We must fetch this data from the API. And in order to do that, first of all, you must register an account inside OpenWeather Map. Now you can jump to account and open the link My API Keys. As you can see here, I have two keys. But most importantly, if you just created an account and created an API key, you can't just start use it. You need to wait several hours for it to be activated. And this is the URL that I want to use. As you can see here, it's API openweathermap.org slash data slash 2.5 weather. Then we have query, so question mark equals. And here we have a string. And then after this, we have a parameter app ID. Essentially, without this app ID, which is your key, you can't do a request. And as you can see here, the whole response is looking exactly like it was inside mock data, which is completely correct for us. Now what I want to do, I want to copy paste this key from here and store it somewhere on the top. So let's create here a property API key. And this is just a string that we want to use. Now the question is when do we want to make this API request? And essentially here inside our weather application, we're getting location. So every single time when we have location and it is not empty, we want to make an API call. And in order to do that, we must use use effect. This is exactly a thing which helps us to do some side effects. And our API call is for sure a side effect. So inside this use effect, first of all, we want to say that our dependency is a location. And then here we want to check that if we don't have a location, so it's an empty string, then we simply return and we don't do anything. If it is not empty, then here we want to prepare our URL. And essentially inside our URL, we're providing a variable. So location is our query and the API key from the top of the file is our app ID. And now after this, we can make our request by using, for example, Axios. I already have Axios inside my application. If you don't, that you must write npm install Axios, and then you must import it on the top. So import Axios from Axios. And now inside our use effect, we can write Axios get, and we're providing a URL inside, and we can use then and get some response back. Now what we want to do, we want to update our weather info, but we don't really have such state. This is why it makes a lot of sense to create here a new property, weather info, and also set weather info. And this will be our property, which will store the current weather information that we must show. So here will be our use state, and by default it will be null when we don't have any info. And additionally here, location, I really want to do null by default and not an empty string because it makes more sense for me. If the location is not set, then it is null and not a string. Now here in our successful response, we want to set weather info and we want to provide inside response.data because inside data we're getting that JSON. What I want to do now, I want to remove from the top this weather info. As you can see, it is already unused. Why that? Because we created here a weather info here and we're providing it inside our component. But here is the problem. This code will break at the beginning when our weather info is undefined. 
We don't really want to render our weather info if it is null. This is why here we must check, okay, do we have weather info? If yes, then we are rendering our weather info block. I am jumping to my project and I am typing here Hamburg, Germany. I am hitting enter and as you can see we got all this information. Let's have a look inside our network. And here as you can see there was a request to our API with query Hamburg, Germany and our app ID. And here we can see the preview with all these numbers and we can see them now on the screen because this is our weather info. So it is 0 degrees, feels like minus 6. So it's really amazing weather here as you can see. Now let's check if we can change the city to get another information. So let's write here Malaga, Spain and hit enter. And as you can see we are getting much warmer weather. So now you saw on a small project how to implement a React application. But are you sure if your React code is really good? I already covered how to refactor junior React code to senior React code. And you might want to check that in this video.